Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I am going over the Chanel 2023 Late Beige Collection for the summertime. So I did pick up the Late Beige Healthy Glow Cream in the shade Rosy Beige, which I am very, very excited about. And I also picked up the Healthy Glow Bronzing Cream in the shade 392 Soleil Tan Medium Bronze. So in today's video, I am going to be showing you these products in action and doing it get ready with me style. So you can see my full in-depth review on these products. I like to go really in depth in reviews, so you will hear me talk a lot about these products. I just want to say that I am so, so happy that they reformulated the Healthy Glow Bronzing Cream because I was someone that was disappointed that they added coconut oil into the new bronzing cream. I'm someone that absolutely loved the Soleil Tan de Chanel. And spoiler alert, this is most similar to the Soleil Tan de Chanel, I want to say, but I'm just very, very excited about these two new releases. I want to say that this. Healthy Glow Cream is probably the best release that I have tried in 2023 so far, the Rosy Beige shade. But if you want to see my full thoughts on the Chanel Le Beige 2023 collection and this get ready with me using some of my favorite summer makeup products, just keep watching. Because the Chanel Le Beige 2023 collection is so skin focused, I'm going to start off with the skin. I mean, there's not that many products that were released, but I'm starting out with this Le Beige Healthy Glow Cream in the shade Rosy Beige. And I have to say, this is honestly a standout product from not only this launch, but any products that I've tried out this year. I really, really am hoping that Chanel releases this in the States. I think currently it's only available in Australia and Canada and possibly the UK. So I'm really hopeful they will release this in the US as well because this is honestly so beautiful. I'm just going to read a little bit about it. The Le Beige Healthy Glow Cream is a cream to gel makeup product that evens out and illuminates the complexion with a subtly rosy veil. Its lightweight formula is easy to blend and leaves skin looking smooth, even, and luminous. It picks up easily and applies smoothly with the help of the retractable kabuki brush um, that you can take anywhere with you. This is a limited edition product. I did not get the kabuki brush, but you can honestly use any brush that you have. And I am just so excited about this because this is beautiful. Now, I did consider the fact that this only comes in one shade that is a rosy beige tone. So I really hate these universal shades. I think they should have released at least three. This one being the lightest and then they should have come out with maybe like a more beige tone and then maybe something that was still brightening so that all complexion tones can use this because even though this is supposed to be universal, I don't think if you have a really deep complexion, this will work. I don't know though, because obviously I have light skin, so I can't really say that for certain. Um, but on my light to medium skin tone, it's really beautiful. And I did decide to apply a little bit more self tanner and I applied a little bit to my face because I wanted to see if you have more of a medium complexion, if this type of product will still work. And I have tried this out and it does honestly. So I'm gonna be taking this on, not a Chanel Kabuki, this is the Shiseido face brush. I forget the exact name. And it actually does fit in this little compact. So I just take my brush into this and I don't know if you can see, you can see a little bit of that pigment that gets picked up. When I swatch it, it is very hard to see the color, especially if I apply it to my hand because it almost blends right in. It's not as pink toned as I thought it was for being a rosy beige color. It's more beige with just an ever so slight, I wouldn't even say coolness to it. It's just like a very hint of pink, but I would say it actually leans more neutral, a bit warmer tone. And it is very like undetectable on my hand when I swatch it. Like I said, you can barely see it, but it offers this veil of just perfecting tint. It is very unique. So again, I'm picking up, I'm gonna go a little bit heavier handed today and I'm using this as a priming product. Now this says specifically that you can put it like on the high points of your face. I actually like to apply it all over. So I'm gonna just start kind of at my cheeks where I have the most discoloration is where I like to focus this more. So I'm gonna focus it on my chin and the lower half of my face first. And then I'm going to run it over the forehead. Now with this brush, I just have to be a little bit careful with the brows. And then with the excess product, I do like to run over the center of my face just ever so slightly. I typically don't like to apply a lot of pigmented product there anyways, because I feel like when you apply product to like your nose and the center of your face that's when foundation becomes more detectable on the skin but i would prefer to just use this product over my nose more than i would a foundation so i actually really like using this as a primer because 
when I apply this as a primer, I don't actually need to apply foundation on my nose or on the center of my face because it really does perfect the skin. I was honestly pretty blown away when I tried this out because I, I didn't really think it would do that much. But I would wear this instead of foundation. I think that it offers the most beautiful blurring effect on the skin. It's not as illuminating or like it doesn't give as much of a healthy glow. I mean, it does give a healthy glow, but it's not as illuminating as I thought it would be. Like there are no detectable glitter particles. I would say there's an ever so soft sheen to it, but again, it gives you more of a healthy glow than it being like detectable shimmer. It's honestly beautiful, the veil of perfected properties it has on it. I'm gonna go in with a little bit more just to see if I can kind of build it up. But again, I think this looks really beautiful just as a perfecting product without applying foundation. It does lighten up my skin tone a little bit. So if you have maybe a foundation that's a bit too deep for you, this would be a really good product to use underneath because it does lighten my complexion. Like I applied a little bit of self tan to my face. It lightened up my skin tone a little bit. So I'd say if you're medium deep, this is perhaps going to be a little bit too light for you. But for a medium complexion, this would work beautifully. And obviously if you're a lighter tone, this would also work beautifully. Really, really fantastic just as a primary product. The ingredients are actually the exact same as the Healthy Glow Bronzing Cream. I did look at them, the ingredients are identical. So this product, which is the Le Beige Healthy Glow Bronzing Cream in the shade 392, you can also use this as a bronzing base all over the face. So you could use this as your primer if you did want that more sun-kissed look, maybe you just don't want to apply foundation. This does work as a bronzing base, which is actually what the original Chanel Soleil Tan de Chanel, you could use that as a bronzing base as well to use underneath the foundation. So if you do have a deeper skin tone, I suggest just going in with this because again, the formula of these two are the exact same. So again, if you have a deeper complexion, you could just go in with this product, but I'm just amazed at how it blurs the skin. I almost feel like I don't really need foundation but I am going to show you a full look. Honestly, the way it blurs the skin and it sits over everything is beautiful. I don't want to, I don't know if it added any coverage per se, maybe like a very slight bit, but it added more of a veil of perfecting properties and just blurring. So my skin looks a little bit more perfected without adding coverage. Like it doesn't look like I have anything sitting on my skin. So this is a great makeup base and a great primer. If you're looking for something for those no makeup makeup days, I do have an SPF on underneath and it works perfectly with my SPFs. I've tried it with a few different SPFs and I've had no issues with pilling or anything like that. So I think this is a great product to use with any sort of um, foundation on top or any sort of sunscreen underneath. It doesn't seem to interact at all. I am just very, very impressed with how this looks on the skin. I am going to be buying a backup of this because it is limited edition and honestly, this is the best primer that I have ever tried. I'm going to talk about similar products at the end and kind of compare them, but honestly, I'm going to be buying a backup of this primer because I am so impressed by it. I just, I think it makes my skin look absolutely beautiful. I wore this to the gym this morning without applying a foundation over top, and I just think my skin looks even better. This is a product I would be so comfortable without applying a foundation over top because I think my skin just looks even better, but it doesn't look at all like I've applied makeup. It is stunning and I really hope again that they make this a permanent product because it's so gorgeous. I'm going to move on to the rest of the complexion and I want to keep this really beautiful natural looking skin so I'm going to go in with the Chanel Le Beige Water Fresh Tint and I am using the shade Medium Plus. I can use the shade Medium as well and I'm just going to take one pump of that and with the exact same sponge, I actually should have just applied this to the sponge I, or to the brush, I'm going to use that same brush and just apply on the skin. Again, this is just going to even out my complexion a little bit more. This Water Fresh Tint is more of a skin tint than an actual foundation. So it's just going to perfect my skin slightly more, but it's not going to be heavy on the skin. You're still gonna see my skin texture shining through and it's just gonna leave my skin looking really natural. And again, I'm going to leave my nose completely without this foundation over top because I think that primer makes my like the center of my skin look so good that I don't want to put any foundation 
on those areas of the skin because it's already blurred enough for me. Like this just makes the water fresh tint even better or any foundations that I apply over top. I just feel like this primer makes them look even better because again, the primer is so perfecting that I don't need to go in with as much foundation. So even with regular foundations, like say if I were to use my Chanel Supermage Le Sans Deton, usually I only go in with like a pump of foundation, maximum two, but with this primer underneath, I only need half a pump of foundation. So it really, really is fantastic. And like I said, things glide over very smoothly and evenly. There's no patchiness. This adds a little bit of longevity to the foundations as well. It is just fantastic. And then for concealer, I'm actually going to go in with the Givenchy Prism Libre Skin Care and Concealer. If you saw that video where I tried this out, I left a note saying that this did crease. But weirdly enough, the more I've tried it, the more I like it and the more it doesn't crease. So I don't know if just maybe when I opened it, I don't know if maybe the concealer has dried down a little bit and now it's just not creasing as much. I actually really enjoy this concealer a lot more than I initially did. So I'm just going to apply a little bit to the under eye area. I'm going to go for a more natural looking makeup look today. And I'm just blending that concealer in with a beauty blender sponge. I'm going to take the new Chanel. This is the Le Beige Healthy Glow Bronzing Cream. I decided to pick up the shade 392. The last formula that was the reformulation of the Soleil Tan de Chanel, I picked that up in the shade 390. And it worked really well for me. It's maybe a little bit too late in the summer, barely though. Um, so I just decided to pick up 392 just so I have something different. I still have the original Soleil Tan de Chanel formula. So in my next video, I am going to go through a more in-depth comparison between all three of them because now we have three different formulas that Chanel has released. So this is the new Le Beige Healthy Glow Bronzing Cream that comes in a travel size that can go wherever you do all summer long. This cream to gel bronzer enhances the complexion with a natural sun-kissed glow. Its lightweight formula is easy to blend and leaves behind a soft, delicate veil on the skin. And so this is a reformulation. They have reformulated without coconut oil again, and I'm so excited because, if you know, the last formulation of the cream bronzer, the Healthy Glow Cream Bronzer, I could not use that often because it did make me break out. So I'm so happy they removed the coconut oil. This formula is still different than the original Soleil Tan de Chanel, though. It, you can find the ingredients of the Soleil Tan de Chanel online, and the ingredients are different than this new bronzer, so it's actually not the same formulation again. So we have three different formulas, but I'm going to pick this up with this Merit, I think it's the number one brush, it's foundation brush. I'll leave it down below. I'm just going to get a bit on this brush, and I'm going to take off a bit of that excess because this is a little deeper than the original. I'm just going to apply it to the perimeters of the skin. And this is gorgeous. Again, it is the exact same formulation as this Healthy Glow Cream in the shade Rosy Beige, but it's just in a deeper color. And I love this formula. It blends like a dream. It applies like a dream. It looks very skin-like. And it's the type of cream bronzer that I love to wear in the summertime. Now, a lot of cream bronzers you will find in the summer will just fade away. They'll get greasy looking. They'll look just, they just look, don't, they don't actually look that good in the summer, even though I know a lot of times it's like tempting to use a cream bronzer in the summertime. But this is a cream bronzer that actually works really well in the summertime because as your skin heats up and produces more oils throughout the day, especially when it is summer and hot, this type of formula actually dries down to a more mattifying powder finish. So it's almost a cream to powder formula, which makes it very wearable in the summertime because it is not going to look greasy throughout the day. It's not going to separate or crease up or anything or get cakey throughout the day. This has a very beautiful dry down to it and it has um, really nice perfecting properties to it. There is this very smoothing effect to this formula. So I really do enjoy this in the summertime because, again, it wears very beautifully in the hot weather because it has that dry down effect in comparison to a lot of cream formulas. This blends really nice, but I am going to go over the edges with a beauty blender just because I like everything really soft. But I think that color is beautiful. It's maybe a little deeper than my normal formulas. It's a really nice warm tone, but it's not too orangey. I feel like this looks really beautiful. I'm going to kind of just swatch it. It's definitely a warm toned bronzer, but I don't think it leans orange. 
and I just think it looks so flattering on the skin. Very skin-like, so I absolutely love that. I love how everything is blending and applying. It does plant, apply very similarly to the original Soleil Tan de Chanel. I want to say that the previous version has a bit more of a sheerness to it, but that could also be because this color is a little bit deeper. Again, I'll do more in-depth comparisons in my next video though, and kind of ranking um, the bronzers and which formula I actually like the best. But really, really impressed with these, and I love that they come in travel sizes because it's really hard to go through that full tub, and these are only good for a year, so this is technically already expired, which is the Le Beige Healthy Glow Bronzing Cream. Technically, this is already expired because I've already had it for a year, and I haven't even gone through a quarter of it, so I'm happy that they came out with these travel sizes because I think this is much more attainable for people to actually get use out of their makeup versus us just having like a ton of these makeup products that we never go through. But again, these are limited edition products. So if you are looking to try this out, I would get your hands on it while you can. I'm gonna go in with a little bit of highlighter because I really want that healthy glow look. This is the Chanel Le Beige Sheer Healthy Glow Highlighting Fluid in the shade Pearly Glow. I don't know if this shade is limited edition, but these are just, well, I applied a little bit too much. So I'm applying a little bit to the back of my hand. And I like to take my fingertip and just kind of get that product on my finger, get it a little bit more dispersed. And then I like to go and tap just on the tops of the cheekbones. Definitely recommend you apply this product before you apply any sort of powder on your skin because this is the type of product that will remove the product underneath if you if you go in with powder first, if that makes sense. And then I'm gonna go over the edges with my Beauty Blender sponge. I definitely applied a little bit too much there. So just on the top of the cheekbones, this is a really gorgeous beige shade. It's kind of like a champagne beigey shade that gives you a beautiful glow. These types of highlighters are really beautiful because they're not too intense. They just look like your skin is glowing, which I really enjoy. I'm gonna take a little bit of that down the center of my nose, but I don't bring it to the tip of my nose just because I don't like that area to be highlighted. I do find it works best when you blend it in first with fingers, but then because this is quite a liquidy formula, I do like to blend out the edges with a sponge or you could use a brush or anything like that just because it does tend to remain a little bit liquidy until you really kind of meld it into the skin. And then I'm going to use a cream blush because again, I want that more dewy sort of look. So I'm gonna keep with the cream products. I'm gonna take this LIS, L-Y-S, I don't know if it's LIS or L-Y-S. This is the Higher Standard Satin Matte Cream Blush in the shade Humble. I've never tried this out before, so I'm just gonna try it out. I think it was my sister, someone suggested this to me, so I thought I would pick it up. It is very, very affordable, and why not? So I'm taking this on just a Wayne Goss, I think this is a 13 brush, and I'm gonna apply a little bit of product, and then I'm gonna take that excess product on the palm of my hand to make sure I don't go in with too much. This is a really pretty pink shade. I'm just applying that to the cheeks. Ooh, this is really nice. So this is like a medium pinky color that's a bit on the brighter side. Has a warmer tone finish, I wanna say, or a warmer tone to it. Really gorgeous matte finish, I want to say. This formula is really easy to work with. It has an emollients to it, but it does dry down on the skin after you've blended it in, but you have time to actually work it into the skin but a really, really pretty color. And it has a really nice glide to it as well. It is applying with ease, really nice pigmentation to it. It's not overly pigmented, but I think that gives a nice flush of color. And as with everything, I'm gonna go over the edges with that sponge just to soften up the edges to make sure there's no harsh lines. I'm gonna quickly do something on the eyes. So I'm going to take, again, this Chanel Le Beige Healthy Glow Bronzing Cream in the shade again, 392, which is the tan medium bronze. And I'm just going to take it on this Wayne Goss 18 brush. It's just a basically a little blending brush. You can use any blending brush you like. 
but I am going to use this on the eyes and I think this will be better than the last version of the Le Beige Cream because this doesn't have that coconut oil in it so it's probably going to dry down a little bit more. I'm first just going to kind of stamp it on the outer corner of the eye and then I'm going to blend that through the crease to give a bit of warmth. This is beautiful just using as a cream eyeshadow on the eyes. I love to do this just to use it as my transition shade. Very flattering. If you're someone that has mature eyes, this would be very flattering as well because it is that cream to powder formula. And it gives a really nice warmth on the eyes. I'm just going to apply that kind of all over as well. And with that excess product, I'm just taking a little bit of the excess that's on the back of my hand and on the tips of this brush. I'm going to look up and apply this to my lower lash line as well, just to get a little bit of color there as well. I want to keep with these creamy type of products. I'm going to take the Chantecaille Mermaid Eye Color in the shade Copper, which I think will pair beautifully with this. I'm just going to take it on this exact same brush, but I'm going to take it on the sides of the brush, tap off that excess, and I'm just going to use this to apply it all over the lid. I don't want too much pigment here, just a little bit of a shine. I just went in with mascara, so I went in with the Chanel, this is the La Base Mascara, this is their Lash Primer. I went in with the YSL Lash Clash Mascara in the shade Brown, and I went in with two coats of that, and then I went in with the Hourglass Waterproof Gel Eyeliner in the shade Cave, which is a brown shade, and I tight-lined my upper waterline. So I think this is like my perfect summer look. I really love how the skin is looking. It looks just very fresh and natural. Like you can still see freckles through. I'm just gonna finish off the lips and I'm going to take the Chanel lipstick. This is the Rouge Coco in the shade Adrian number 402. This is just like a classic nude shade. And I'm going to go all over the lips. And I forgot how nude this was, so I think I am going to add a little bit of definition with this Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Lip Sheet. And then I'm going to take the Rouge Cocoa Balm in the shade 912 Dreamy White. I think this was released last year and I really love this balm. It has a nice waxy consistency. I feel like it is perfect for summer because sometimes you don't want like a really glossy lip in the summertime. It just feels like too glossy and like it will get everywhere but this nice balmy texture gives more of like a satin just like a velvet finish I want to say it's not like overly glossy or anything but it feels very comfortable on the lips just like a lip balm does and as a final final touch I'm going to go in with the clay de peau refining press powder I just like to dip it in tap off the excess and then just go in the center of the face just where I want to be a little bit more matte and then that's the only areas I'm going to have. I've kind of gone over my shop thoughts on the Chanel Healthy Glow Cream in the shade Rosy Beige. I'm buying a backup as soon as this video I'm done filming this video because I really really love this as a priming product. It requires me to not even necessarily go in with foundation or I can just use such a lightweight light amount of foundation and it really retains that skin-like property, but it makes your skin look more blurred. It makes your skin look smooth, slightly radiant without it being shimmery in any way. It does really give your skin a healthy glow, but it gives you that healthy glow while also blurring and perfecting the skin. This is the best primer I've ever tried. This is also the best product of 2023 that I have tried. This is a standout product. I really, really hope they make this into a permanent product. I actually wouldn't mind having this in the full-size product, Typically nowadays, I am more inclined to maybe buy something that's more of this travel size just because I am someone that does like to try out new makeup. I don't necessarily like to try out all the new makeup releases because I am really picky, but I do like that we have this option to get a travel size, and I like that a lot of companies are coming out with more mini sizes. It just makes it more accessible, and I think it does make it easier to try out products because you actually feel like you could go through something like this. This also is going to be very convenient for traveling. I just am a really big fan of Chanel doing this. I do wish they came out with some maybe more products that were, I don't know, like maybe a mini eyeshadow palette would have been fun to see in the summer collection. It would have just been nice to see a few more products, I think. But this is a very nice curated collection. They didn't overwhelm us with a lot of products. And then for the Chanel Soleil Tan in the shade 392 Medium Bronze, Really, really love this formula. It reminds me of the original Soleil Tan de Chanel. I want to say maybe 
Yeah, they're honestly very, very similar in the texture of them. I am, again, going to go over all three of them in a video, but I just love how this lays on the skin. Again, it's one of those bronzers that's like a cream to powder. It looks very flattering on the skin. You could also use this product as a makeup base. It would just give you more of a bronze tint, of course, but the formula of these two products are the exact same. They just have a different color to them, obviously. Um, but really, really happy with these releases. I honestly have no complaints. I have nothing negative to say about this. I did want to mention that the Chanel Healthy Glow Cream and the shade Rosy Beige, I feel like people will ask me the difference between the Chantecaille Sheer Glow Rose Face Tint between this or which one I like better. I like the Chanel Le Beige Healthy Glow Cream and the shade Rosy Beige better. I just find that it looks even more flattering. Now I do prefer this Chantecaille one under the eyes um, because this is more of that jelly consistency, like it almost looks like a cream. But I would say that the more blurring product is the Chanel one, and I think the most flattering one all over the skin as a complexion product is the Chanel one. I still do like this Chantecaille one, but I, I honestly feel like this Chanel one is way better in my opinion. I just think it looks better. Um, those are probably the most comparable. Honestly, this is just such a unique product because it is this cream formulation. Usually these types of like putty things you wouldn't necessarily think to use as a priming product. This is very, very impressive. So I would love to know your thoughts on this new collection. Are you picking up anything? Honestly, I would suggest picking up the bronzer if you were someone who missed out on the Soleil Tan de Chanel or if you're someone that just didn't like the last formulation because I am very, very happy that they formulated this without the coconut oil. I'm hoping that they're just going to reformulate the Le Beige Healthy Glow Cream to have it contain no or no coconut oil because I just think that was a silly thing to do. Um, I feel like it messed up the Soleil Tan de Chanel. But that is it for today's video. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Like this video if you like it. And I will see you in my next video.